Decepticons attack! Hello and welcome to Modern Broadcast. In this week's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the BMAX B1 Plus Mini PC and set it up as an emulation PC with LaunchBox. This compact and powerful device is a great option for anyone looking to play classic games on their TV or monitor. Let's get started! Alright, so here we have the BMAX box with the little logo in the front. Um, so this is a mini PC. It's just under $100 on Amazon uh, and was delivered pretty much right away. Uh, but let's take a look at this packaging. So I went with the BMAX B1 Plus uh, model here. It is an older model, um, but I'm hoping that we can get this set up with LaunchBox and hopefully get uh, at least GameCube emulation out of this. Uh, this device is relatively inexpensive, um, sitting at just under $100, um, and they do have sales, uh, so that it might go lower. But um, taking a look at the box here, not much really to see. We got BMAX, the logo, turning on the side here, just BMAX again. Uh, so my model here is the B1 Plus. It has an Intel Celeron N3350 processor, 6 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and 64 gigabytes of uh, internal storage. Now you can expand the storage with an M.2, um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Doesn't look like there's anything on this side either, so let's go ahead and get this open. Our typical handy dandy knif here, we're gonna take that and cut the sticker here. All right, so let's go ahead and remove a little styrofoam here. And here's the device. Pull that out and we'll set this aside for now. All right, so also in the box here, we have an HDMI cable, our power adapter, Looks like a quick setup guide, along with a mounting bracket. Unveiling our device here. Here we have it, a nice sleek, uh, pretty thin computer here. Nice design with the logo and BMAX for air vents up top. In the front looks like we just have a light indicator. It looks like maybe another one there. On the side of the device, it looks like we have a micro SD card slot, two USB 3.0 ports. On the back of the device, we have our power, our power adapter, two USB 2.0 ports, an HDMI out port, Ethernet port, and it looks like we have our headphone jack and mic input. Uh, combination right there and a reset pinhole on the other side of the device looks like we have a VGA out port on the bottom here looks like we have a mounting uh, hole here uh, so this is the B1 plus and behind this door here is where we'd install an M.2 I don't have one uh, for this video so I'm not gonna do that but uh, I also don't know how much use we're going to get out of this. Uh, we're going to kind of explore together. So let's go ahead and uh, start the process of getting it set up. Okay. And so now we have it up here. Uh, we're going to do our first time setup. So again, this is running Windows 10. I'll go ahead and do the Windows process and the prompts here. All right. So it looks like it's getting that all set up. So a little information about the BMAX. The BMAX is a fanless computer. So there is no sound emitting out from the device itself. It has a total of the four USB ports, two of which are 3.0 and the other two are 2.0. It does have a expandable micro SD card slot and also a M.2 slot on the bottom that we could add up to one terabyte or more. With that Intel CPU, I am a little worried about the performance of this device as I'm not entirely sure what that specific CPU is capable of. I am hoping that we can get, like I said, GameCube out of this device and maybe even more, but uh, I'm not too hopeful for that. All right, so here we have it. It is now on. We'll do this later. Looks like it comes with Chrome already installed. Let's go ahead and open that up. First things first, I guess we'll need to connect to our Wi-Fi. 
Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay. I'll open up Chrome here. Looks like it's out of date, so we need to update it by reinstalling. That does make sense as this device is quite a bit older. All right, and here we are at the LaunchBox web address. So here on the main page, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this Download Now button since I already have a forever license. And I'm gonna enter in my email address and then download. All right, once that's done, it says, please check your email for the download link. All right, and so after checking my email, be sure to also check your spam folder if you don't have an email from LaunchBox as mine went into the spam folder. So now we have it here, it is downloading. It looks like with one minute left. All right, once that's finished downloading, we're gonna go ahead and open this up and we'll go through the setup process. When you're asked if you wanna download and install now, we're gonna say yes. Okay, and here we have LaunchBox, at least the start of it. So what am I actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this down because right here up at the top, it says we are on the free version. I already have a lifetime license, so I'm going to go ahead and start that process of transferring that over. Okay, so I have a uh, USB kind of prepped here with some games, also with emulators. I cannot tell you where to get games or emulators. You'll just have to do a simple Moogle search, and that should get you in the right direction. But what we want to do here, since I already have a full-time license, what I'm going to do is just transfer this license file right on over here to the USB stick. Then when we plug our USB stick into our BMAX, we can transfer that license file over to the root of the LaunchBox folder. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so I plugged in the USB stick into our BMAX computer here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this license file and I'm gonna drag it over to the root of our LaunchBox folder. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and open up LaunchBox. All right, and we now know that it's working because it says it's licensed to, and then my name up there at the top. So, since this is the first time that we're setting up LaunchBox, we have this add games here where we can import ROMs, arcade games, Amazon games, Origin, Epic, and so on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and import ROM files. So if you accidentally close the window before you finalize, it's okay, you can go up to tools, import, ROM files, push next, let's add a folder, add for the GameCube, push next, it automatically figured out these were Nintendo GameCube games, and push next, and would you like to automatically install and configure RetroArch? So it's actually offering to automatically install and configure it for us, so I'm going to go ahead and just say yes, and would you like to move or copy the files? So I'm gonna use the files in their current location just because we only have 64 gigabytes of internal storage. So I'm just gonna leave them on the USB stick. Would you like to download metadata for your games? I'm gonna say yes and next. So it's going to download advertisements, front and back, cabinet art, box art, disc art, all sorts of things, including screenshots and even fan art. So you're going to go ahead and say next and you can configure emu movies this will download like video files for the games i'm not going to do that for now i'm just going to skip that but you can set this up it's fairly simple all you do is create an account and then connect your account to this and it will work it also offers to download bezels from the bezel project this is very neat if you're playing a 4x3 game and you don't want the black bars on the left and right you can instead have one of these bezels and they are either theme or system related let's go ahead and say yes and let's do theme we'll hit next again and it found these three games it found animal crossing legend of zelda wind waker and luigi's mansion we'll hit finish and it will start to import these games. It's refreshing the metadata. And then it will start to download and install RetroArch along with all the fan art and box art, disc art, everything. Okay, and here we have it. So here are our three games. And we see down here at the bottom, it's still downloading fan art and disc art. So we'll go ahead and let this finish up real quick, just so we're not pulling resources while we try to play a game. All right, now that it's done, says 58 media items were successfully downloaded 
let's go ahead and click on Animal Crossing. All right, so we see when we click on Animal Crossing here, we get some screenshots off to the right side here, some fan art, and the information about the game. So Animal Crossing is a life simulation sandbox game. It's single player. Animal Crossing allows you to interact with a virtual village of animals that are doing something different every minute of every day. With Animal Crossing 24 hour clock, the game's unique events can be in sync with real time. Also gives a rating. You can rate the game. You can also mark it if you complete the game, beat it, if it's a favorite, or edit any details within. So let's go ahead and see if we can boot this. All right, so we booted up here and it looks like it auto configured the, oops, let's click here. I might fix it. Uh-oh, <laughs> let's try that again. Let's just open up RetroArch. There we go. Okay, and then we'll close this out and we'll try that again. So it looks like it's trying. We almost get into the game, but it auto booted up the uh, bezel for the game. And it looks like we can just pause and then the game crashes. Let's try Luigi's Mansion. Okay, so the game is booting up. And Luigi's Mansion won't even boot. So, I fear that uh, GameCube just might not be possible with this BMAX. Let's go ahead and try some other systems here as I try to get this fixed. <laughs> So I'm going to go up here to Tools, go to Import, ROM Files, add a folder. Let's see if it can do Sega Saturn. So it looks like we have a backup RAM here that's part of the Dragon Force game. So we're going to go ahead and import it, and then we'll I'll show you how to delete games from that point. So as you see here on the side, we now have a Consoles tab, and we can open that and click on the specific console that we are looking for. But if we just click consoles, it shows all the games. So we'll go ahead and click on Sega Saturn here. Here's that backup RAM. I'm going to go ahead and right click on that. After right clicking, I'm going to go down to edit and delete. You can also just push the delete key on your keyboard. And 35 media items were successfully downloaded. Let's go ahead and try to boot up Guardian Heroes, which is a fantastic beat em up for the Sega Saturn. And it looks like that is working. We have a nice side art here. I connected my GameCube wireless controller. Let's go ahead. This is working great. A little bit of audio stutter there. Let's see how the game plays. Hopefully this goes really well. So far, it seems to be working fairly well. The audio is a little bit to be desired, so it's struggling here. And there's some stuttering. It's playable, but there's definitely some frames dropping. <laughs> so I think even Saturn might be out for this B-Max. So overall, do I think this is a good value? No, absolutely not. I think for $100, there are other devices out there that can emulate better. And there's even like those all-in-one HDMI sticks. I, I just think that there are other options available for you to emulate these systems. You might not get GameCube, you might not get like Wii U or anything like that. I knew going into this that was gonna be a huge stretch. I am surprised to see that Sega Saturn, although it is a hard console to emulate, I was surprised to see that Sega Saturn did not work on this device. The BMAX B1 Plus Mini PC, like a Decepticon Transformer, may seem appealing at first glance with its compact size, but ultimately fail to deliver the performance and user experience you expect, just causing disappointment and frustration. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. What are your thoughts on the BMAX? What systems are you guys getting to emulate all your emulation needs? Let me know in the comments down below. Have a great week everyone, and take care.